Praise God. The Lord is good. And worthy to be praised. Praise God. I love the Lord today. I thank God for being in the house of, of the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord knows everything. There's nothing that he that passes the Lord that he don't know. <coughs> Glory to God. He said he knows every hair on your head are numbered. You know what that means? That means when one hair falls, he knows how many fell. They already been numbered. <laughs> Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Glory to God. Tonight, I believe the Lord has given me something for the church. I pray that you receive it. If you hear and you open your heart, you're going to receive something. You know, you're going to receive what God has. The title tonight is going to be Healing on the Jericho Road. Yes. Healing on the Jericho Road. Yes. Glory to God. Somebody, somebody needs a healing. Somebody re needs a renewing of something. Praise God. What I have learned about Jesus about our Lord is that he's a God of invitation. Yes. Yes. If you allow Jesus to come into your life, he will. Yes. Jesus says, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man opens the door, I'll come in and sup with him. Right. Amen. Amen? Amen? Now, how much do you want him to sup with you? How much do you want him to be into your life? We can allow a little bit or we can allow a lot. I want a lot. I want everything that he has for me. I don't want to play the game. I'm just on the sideline, you know. Just give me a little bit today. Just enough to, to sustain me, you know. I want to be, like the Bible says, overflowing. 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 Many are not here today because they didn't allow Jesus to do a work in their lives. And there are many that are just sick and I know I can understand that. Praise God. But we're gonna to turn to the book of Luke chapter 10. Praise God. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. Jesus is speaking here in a parable. Praise God. And it says, y'all can read along with me if y'all want to. Praise the Lord. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. We're going to read all the way down to 37. And by chance there came down a certain, and, and by chance there came down a certain priest that, that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. 
And likewise a Levi, when he went and passed, came by and looked at him and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and setting him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and went and gave them to the host and said unto the him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spend it more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now which of these do you think was neighborly unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your Holy Spirit and thank you for your precious word, Lord. And I thank you for all these beautiful saints that you have brought here tonight, Lord Jesus. I pray that they receive what you have, Lord. If we just take heed and hear your word and open our hearts, we need you, Lord. Work on us, Lord. Let your spirit move upon this congregation. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> Glory Thank to God. You, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is speaking here. And he's saying, and Jesus answered and said, a certain man. He didn't put a name. He didn't put a name on this person. <coughs> a certain man, he said. And why he didn't put a name is because it could be you or me. A certain man went down from Jerusalem. He's talking about there's a man that's leaving Jerusalem, the house of God. He's leaving the house of God. He's traveling down a road that he knows that there are thieves not only that, but he's traveling alone. That's the wrong thing to do, travel alone, when you leave the house of God. You're all alone. There's no protection. It says that he fell among some thieves, almost like as though he tripped. Almost as though he tripped among them, you know. But that's not, that's, you know. We're on a road, church. And on this road, God says that you're going to face things. You are going to face things. Things are going to come your way. The enemy comes to lie, steal, and destroy. In St. John 10.10, 10, it says what it says. Praise God. And if we don't be careful and stay in the house of God, we let ourselves open. We're a target. We're a target. It says that he went down. Any time that you leave the house of God, you are going down. You're not going. You're not going to. Per, you're not going to prosper in any way. You have lost your protection. You're out there all alone. You're going to go down. 
many people leave the house of God. And before you know it, the first thing that I see the women do, they cut their hair. That's the first thing that they do. They cut their hair. They put on them pants. The men go to drinking and cussing and smoking and you're going down. You have no protection. I know about being hurt. I know about being left wounded. As a child, I was abused severely. My dad almost wanted to kill me as though he was the real, as though he was the devil himself. I remember a time at the age of 13 when I was going down the Highway 35 heading north to Troy. We had came from Belton picking up a load of dirt. And we, I was sitting in the back of my pickup truck with my little brother. And we was going down 35 and, and my dad was doing about 60, 65. And my little brother got cold and he said, Freddie, can you get the jacket? And I remember the win window being down and my brother was in the front seat with my dad in the cab. And I, so I said, yeah, I can get the jacket for you. And so I reached over to the window and the wind caught me and I went back. And as I was going down the highway, all I could feel was highway. Highway all in my face. And my dad kept going and I was down. Good thing, only God had his hand on me. Good thing there wasn't a car behind me or an 18 wheeler would have killed me. But all I could feel was just me, me just sliding. And when I came to a stop, kind of like stood up and I was looking and finally I seen the lights come on way up there about a half a mile. And I was staggering. And my whole face, I didn't realize I didn't have a face. My whole face had so many rocks in it. And I got up and I was just like, okay, you know, and I'm trying to focus. And finally I see my dad pull over and when he did, he kind of backed up a little bit. But I more or less walked over there because it's like he wasn't in no hurry to get to me. And when I got in the truck, the first thing he does, he cusses me out and tells me his names and tells me what was I doing. And, and, I, and I, my, blood, my whole face was bleeding. I was covered with blood, my, whole, my pants and everything. And, and I'm sitting there and he, I, I seen him as he reached down to the floorboard and grabbed the dirtiest rag he could grab. He was a mechanic and he was all full of grease. And he said, wipe your face. You know, and I wiped my face with it. <clears throat> and I remember getting to the house and, oh, man. Woo. Man, my face was swollen and I could just feel burning and I just, I couldn't hardly see. And my mama, boy, when she saw me, she was in rage. And then he goes to telling her that I was the cause of it. You know? And for six months... I laid in that couch in the living room. No doctor, it's not allowed. For six months, my mama was plucking rocks out of my face. And my mama said, I didn't have a face. She didn't even want me to see the ugliness, you know. For six months, I laid there drinking out of a straw. Mm, man, that was leaving me to die. You know, there's no hope there for that boy. He done it. He, you know, he shouldn't have done that. You know. But as a child, that's the way I was brought up. One day he had me against a tree, choking me to death. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and he meant it. If it wasn't for my brothers and sisters, he probably would have done it. You know. Woo. Man, the devil back then was trying to kill me. But I'm still here. 
I'm still here. By the grace of God. You know, by the grace of God. God knew he had a plan for me. Go, Man, you're going, to be, you're going to have some testimonies to tell the people. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You don't know my house was hell. And, the Bible, you know, one preacher said, if you're going through hell, go all, all the way through it. You know, don't stop. <laughs> Man. But this man went alone going to Jericho and he fell among some thieves and they were stripping him. Don't be careful. Don't let the devil come and lie to you. Be careful because the devil is slick. He wants to strip you. What does he want to take from you? He wants to take your garment. He wants to take what God put on you. He's not worried about the world out there. He already got that. He's, he wants the church. He wants the church because he knows the church got something valuable. The garment. He wants to strip you of your garment. He wants to tell you you're nobody. He wants to tell you you're no good. Some of y'all been abused. Some of y'all probably been molested. Some of y'all been probably told you're, you're just like your daddy. You ain't no good. You're just like your mama. You ain't no good. Them are all spirits, curses. Don't believe those thoughts and those things that the devil brings your way. That's why the, the Bible says put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor. Cast those imaginations down. Cast them down. Be careful where you're going. Be careful. Because he is out to kill. He is out to kill. To destroy. Praise God. And you know... Back in, in Jesus' days, you could tell who was who by the way they dressed. And I see this that, this, that it says that he's trying to strip him of his raiment, his garment, because I believe if he can take that away from him, he can't survive out there in the wilderness, in the desert. You know, they wear this heavy clothes because sometimes it gets cold at night. And then they put this hood over them for the sun that won't burn them so much. And if there's a sandstorm, they put a, a rag around their face so they can breathe. You know, but if you take that from a man, there's not much left. There's not much left. Thank God for this Samaritan that came and picked him up. There's many out there that are wounded today. We need to go out there and get them, bring them home. The devil has lied to them and said, you, it ain't doing you no good to go to the house of God. You know, many leave because somebody's preaching something. You know, oh, I came that day and they talked about the pants. Man, oh, man. You're going to leave just for that? For one thing, the man didn't even know you was coming. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you directly. Take heed to that. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The Lord is so good. And I have some scriptures that I wanted to speak to about. In Mark 4.11, it talks about, in Mark 4.11, it talks about Jesus had just got through talking 
to his disciples about the sower that sowed the seed. And in 11 it says, 11 and 12 it says, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without are these things done in parable. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and in hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and, and their sins should be forgiven them. Jesus is letting his disciples know that it's not for everybody. It can be, but, you know, if you're, if you're wanting it bad enough, it could be for you. He's speaking in a parable here, you know, speaking. You can come to the house of God and you can sit and you won't get anything out of it. Not unless you invite God in and say, give me a revelation. Help me to understand. Help me see, God, what your word is really saying. I believe that's why the Bible says meditate on the word day and night. You know, a lot of times I read a scripture and I really don't understand it, so I read it over again and then I'll get something out of it. And the more I read it, I start getting more out of it. Amen. You know, I'm meditating on it. And he told them, he says, it's not for everybody. You know, but we are blessed. We are blessed to hear and to know the word. And it's not because we're smart. It's because he is allowing that. Our Lord allows us to see in things that others can't see and hear that others can't hear. You know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you that you give me that that opportunity that I can see and hear what other, you know what you're really trying to say to us praise God thank you Jesus Psalms 119 Says this, Psalms 119, 164. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteousness and judgment. And 165 says, Great praise have thou with love, the Lord. And nothing shall offend me them. Great praise have thou which love the law, and nothing shall offend them. Praise God. Nothing shall offend them. If we know who we are in Christ. Nothing shall offend you. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, nothing shall offend you. If somebody speaks evil of you, it should go over your head. You shouldn't take it and say, oh man, he said something about me. It, sh you, it shouldn't bother you. If you know who you are in Christ. And I believe that because when Jesus went to Calvary, he didn't say a word. They beat him. They plucked his beard. They beat him to where he wasn't even looking like a man. And he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Nothing offended him. 
and all the accusing and all the lies that they were saying about Jesus Christ, nothing would offend him. Amen. And Jesus says, let us, let us be like him. We should be walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. We, we shouldn't be offended nor should we be talking or, or hurting others either, you know, saying bad things about others. Let us be the light of the world. Don't, don't let the devil bring stuff into your head and, and, and you go gossiping, you go lying, and you go talking about people. Don't do the devil's work. Let's do the will of God. Amen. And you're going to see that God is going to build you up more. God is going to build you up more. Let's go to Psalms 103. I like this. And know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. Amen. Understand that God has created us. That we didn't just fall into this world, stumble into this world. God created us to be like him. Amen. Know that you were made of God. God created you. Thank you, Lord. God created us, and if God created us, then we should be looking and acting like Jesus Christ and walking like him. It's, it's just like when the manufacturer that made Apple, that telephone that everybody worships. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Put more attention to it than God. <laughs> but, you know, if that whoever made that phone, Apple, Apple didn't tell the phone that it was a washing machine, did it? No. They said, you're a phone and act like a phone, you know? Yeah. You know? And if Apple, the man that created Apple and made it, what does that phone do? Uh, that phone every, every six months or every 30 minutes, it's upgraded or downgraded, right? Yeah, you know. I think we need an upgrade. Who created us? Jesus. And he named. That's why we're baptized in his name, because he created us. Just like Apple gave the name to Apple, the man that gave the man to Apple, the, the, the name of Apple, the manufacturer that named it, well, God made us. That's why we're baptized in Jesus' name. Because he created us. It says here, he made us. It says he made us. And I believe that we need an upgrade. Some of us need an upgrade. All you got to do is ask him. Lord, give me an upgrade. Help me to know your word more. Help me to be more like you. Shut down this computer, this old, this old computer that I got the way I'm thinking. And put your, put your chip in there. Come on, you know. Man, boy, they think highly of the phone, but man, when it comes to God, oh, they don't think much of him. But you know what? It was God himself that made that phone. <laughs> God made everything, you know. So we need an upgrade in the word and to be real with God and to, and to teach others. Glory to God. Thank God that he made us in his image. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And I'm going to John, St. John, chapter 14. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. St. John 14, 26. Look at here. Ooh, 
This is what we need. St. John chapter 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. There it is right there. He shall teach you all things to your remembrance and whatsoever I have said unto you. There's a lot of us that forget things, you know. Sometimes I'm walking around, oh, man, what I do is my keys, you know. And then I think, and I'm talking to myself, oh, yeah, I know where I got them. I left them over here in the car, you know. We we'll start talking to ourselves. The Holy Ghost is here to teach you all things and bring them to remembrance. To remembrance. Do not leave the house of God. Don't leave the house of God because there's so many blessings and so many things that God has for us. He does. A lot of us miss out on it. We leave too early, you know. It's the Holy Ghost. We need that Holy Ghost working in our lives. It says be filled with the Holy Spirit. I got to thinking about it the other day and I said, man, you know what? Uh, that gas pump says super unleaded, you know, but I can't afford it. <laughs> But that's like the Holy Ghost. We're always putting in the, the one that's mixed with water, you know. We're just putting along, put, 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 you know. God says, Get, put in the new wine, yeah. the real thing. Yeah. You know, let those spark plugs come alive yeah. when you step on that gas, you know. Get all the performance out of that V8, you know. <laughs> No, I step on mine and he's just like, man, I ain't got no power. I'm going to get run over. <laughs> you know? But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, man, we are ready. We are fired up. We are ready to witness, to give a Bible study, to be a light to somebody. I went to my, mate, my neighbors yesterday. I told my wife, I'm, I'm, I feel like the Lord wants me to go to my neighbor's house and witness and teach, uh, pray for him. And boy, sure enough, I went over there, and man, we sat for about 30 minutes, and he's, a, he's an elderly man, but he's on his wheelchair. But he's always sitting out there, and I'm waving at him. He waves at me, and, and he said, yes, sir, come and pray for me. I haven't been going to church, you know, because I can't go. And I got the thing, I said, well, we'll bring the church to you if you want it, you know. <laughs> you know, but they allowed me to come into their house, and, and I, I, I talked to them a little bit about the word, and teaching them they said well we just look at uh, we watch um, uh, that what is that jimmy swagger on sundays that's our that's where we get our church at i said oh you're missing it i said <laughs> i said you got to come to the house of god you know and if i need to i'll go and pick them up you know i need to go back and tell them i'm going to go back and let them know hey y'all want to come i'll i'll come and get you i know i'll make that you know sacrifice for jesus you know because we got to fill him with the Holy Ghost, you know. Let him know that there is truth out there, you know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and I just thank you, the Lord, for that. I'm going to get down to one more last. Let's see. We know that in Leviticus 17, 11, that there is life in the blood, you know. And we need that. Jesus, he, he paid it all at Calvary. You know, he, he was the sacrifice for us. So we should give him 100% of everything that we do. You know, God gave all, he gave us all, we need to give our all. You know, we're in it for the long haul. You know, when we signed in, we didn't sign in for halfway. We signed in all the way, all the way. And as long as you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can do it. God chose you. 
you, you, he chose you. He knows that you can do the job, you know. It's, it's, you're, not, you're not in here by accident. You're here because the Lord says you are chosen. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You can do my job. You are my hands and my feet, you know. Praise God. I like it where it, in, a, in the book of Daniel, where in verse 3, where the king, you know, wanted Meshach and Abednego and, to bow down to their God. They wouldn't do it. They, they couldn't do it because they had seen too much of what God had done for them. You know, they knew a God that was real and the God that they had wasn't real. And the king got upset. You know, he told them, if you don't bow down and if you don't stop praying, you're going to be thrown in the furnace. You know, and they say, it's okay. I'm not going to bow down to your God. We shouldn't bow down to the world. We shouldn't bow down to things that are not of God. Put them first. And the Bible says that they, the, the king threw them in there into the furnace. Because he couldn't get them to bow down to worship his God. And it says that the king looked in there and he saw four men instead of three. And the fourth one looked like the son of God, the son of man. But on verse 30, it says that when they came out of the furnace, that they didn't even smell like smoke. They still had their garment on. Wow. Don't let Satan rob you of your garment. They still have their garment on, it says. And it said that the king promoted them. I think we need, we wanna, we need to be promoted if we're in the will of God and doing God's will, standing for truth. Standing for the truth. If you stand for truth for God, it's going to be worth every bit of it. You can take that to the bank. You can bank on God. You can believe on God. If God said it, it's settled and it's truth. We're not just in something that, oh, it may be this day and may not, may not the next day. No, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He's never going to leave you. He didn't leave that man on the road to die. Somebody came by and helped him. Just like somebody helped us to come into the truth. We're here today because of somebody's prayer. Somebody's taking time out. Amen. Praise the Lord. So stand for truth and don't let the devil rob you. He's already lost. He's already lost. He can play the game and pretend and all that, but don't believe those lies. Believe in the truth and stand in the truth. And I thank God that I am in the truth today. This church preaches the truth. I thank God for a godly man that preaches the truth. You don't find many of those. You don't. You don't find many that are preaching the truth, you know. It may be a small congregation, but you know what? There was only eight souls that were, la that, that, that were saved in the day of Noah, you know. You know. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank you for sharing that with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.